Hello and welcome to Trekkie and Beyond Star Trek Podcast. I'm Anika. And I'm Andrea. And welcome to episode two of season four of Discovery. We're talking Anomaly. This episode is all about Saru coming back to the USS Discovery to help them figure out what the heck happened to Book's planet. We have another universe-wide mystery because this does not only affect Quajon, it does not only affect people, the members of Star or the Starfleet Federation, this affects everyone in the universe because who knows what's going to happen when these two random um, black holes decide, I want to eat a planet today. So there's a lot of ups and downs in this episode, a lot of heartbreak, mostly heartbreaks. This is a ton of heartbreak and a little happiness, just, just a little smidge. So let's go ahead and get into it and discuss initial reactions. What did you think? It's not my favorite episode. However, I really like it because I like drama and this one definitely had drama. <laughs> and I realized I also really miss futuristic technology. And so that's what Discovery offers. This far into the future, like I was not even thinking of the tethering situation and all of this and a double wormhole and all of this other stuff. So it takes me completely out of reality, which is what I'm looking for in my science fiction. So I liked it. I don't know. I feel like we're doing the same formula as we go through seasons and there's the anomaly, there's a data collection, there's the like there's an anomaly episode, there's a data collection episode, there's understanding the data episode, there's what are we gonna do about the data episode, the, oh we had the wrong data episode. And so this is it seems like we're on a a journey that we've been on before, except now the mystery is different. Do I wasn't excited watching it. Because I, I, in my mind, I was like, we've been here with the burn before. We've been here with them trying to study all this. Like, get, and it just didn't seem like anything new. And I felt like this could have been 10 minutes of Strange New Worlds of like collecting the data and like getting it together and figuring it out versus spreading it up. Because I mean, granted, what they did probably took like 20, 10 minutes because that's all Paul could give them. Paul's like, I need at least 10 minutes. They could only get, barely give him 10 minutes, but the episode spanned like an hour. So, I'm ready for more than the same version, different topic, if that makes sense. That's interesting, because I also like the fact that it connected to the previous season. So finally, they dealt with Paul's situation of being thrown, being like projected uh, out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, they talked about the elephant in the room mm -hmm. and the fact that Book has this talent that he didn't talk about last episode. And I felt a little emptiness about like, okay, so Book helped them jump out of Osiris' ship, but they're not talking about this. So finally they, they, they mentioned it. And so Paul and Book have a chance to be together mm -hmm. um, and to, to hash it out. And Book is mourning. And so I, I think we see that though. Yeah, we see him mourning. Season. <laughs> Grief. <laughs> so what I meant was not that the information was new, the format of the right. episode isn't new for me. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like I get like everything they told us was new because it, it, we, yeah. we don't know what's happening, who caused the whatever this thing is. I just like <laughs> the characters and I like the romance and the conflict kind of throw in and get this grit. This grit. And the hypocrisy that we're going to get to in a little bit later. <laughs> So basically, this episode starts off with everyone, basically, all the higher-ups from all the planets that are part of this Federation or even thinking about becoming back, back to the Federation, the President, Admiral, Michael, all there to discuss what the heck is going on and how they don't understand where this anomaly came from and the fact that this thing can destroy a world and it destroyed Quajon. And of course, at that moment, Book walks in. And I just want to know, how does he have free range of like a Starfleet? It doesn't seem like they were on Discovery. It seemed like they were at the headquarters. He is the sole survivor. So <laughs> Does he not need an escort? Because I feel like when Michael and them came to Starfleet, they needed an escort because they, you know, Admiral Vance didn't trust them. Yes. And it's like, like, I understand you're the sole survivor, but, like, you make a point to say this episode, you're not Starfleet. You should still have an escort. Regardless of the fact that they trust you, you're not Starfleet. Yes. Rules. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're yes. not on Discovery. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, he shouldn't be allowed on the bridge. There's so many other rules that's broken. Yes. It was nice, though, to see all of these different representatives in one place because before the Federation was all broken up and scattered. So it was hard to see diverse, as much diversity um, mm -hmm. as we saw at that time. Oh, no, you're right. You're definitely right. Like That was great to see Navarre come back, to see some people from the last season um, come. So it was a, it was like a little homecoming, a little family reunion after grandma died. No one's happy, but you're there, you know? It's like, okay, we got to talk about this, but we don't want to. <laughs> um, we see that the Navarre uh, president offers the services of the Navarre Science Institute to help them go through any of the data that they receive. And I just have to, to your comment about futuristic technology, no one has a better way of, of like studying this data. <laughs> yeah, they should have been able to send a probe into <laughs> a robot <laughs> into the double black hole. <laughs> we'll get to that part. <laughs> yes, because the Science Institute, y'all ain't got nothing on the bar that could have done this. Except for like, you know, a living, breathing person. But as we get on Discovery, they're the ones who are tasked with going towards the anomaly. And again, because they have the spore drive and, you know, they can jump exactly there and jump back and they don't have to use the lithium. So it's like, okay, you're, it's like they're um, Tesla of the, of the fleet. <laughs> you don't need gas. You can just jump there. Yeah. And we see that they can't get closer to the anomaly. And the thing is, with the black hole, they make a point of saying, like, how did no one know this? Like, well, you'll never know unless it starts eating matter about a black hole. And so they get there and they can't see anything until they change the spectrum. And I have to admit, that was pretty cool. Yeah. That spectrum was beautiful yeah. that they showed of like how, I need that printed out on my, put that on my wall. I mean, granted, yeah, they were like, it killed things, but like, nice. <laughs> um, and so then like Book says that he's going, like his ship could get closer because Discovery couldn't. Michael says Dittmer is going to pilot his ship gonna throw a Starfleet person under the bus like that. Well, Denver did program fly his ship last season, so, yeah. Yeah. so we know she has experience there. Um, but I was hoping that both Book and Dittmer would travel together on that journey. <laughs> in, in my mind, this like reference exactly sort of back to what the president was talking about last episode of like how she's like not willing to risk people and i felt like this showed that she wasn't really willing to risk book but you were willing to risk dittmer let's be honest and he was right if this was reversed you would be the person in the ship you're always the person in the ship michael like and then it's like well and you would have told me not to and you would have been right and you wouldn't have listened because you never listened that's all i could think of was the hypocrisy i'm like granted, you're right michael you're actually correct like he's he is a little emotional, but at the same time, he's also right. He is the best person for this job because no one knows his shit better than he does. He has all of the um, eggs in one basket. This, his entire, he's like you guys. You grieved everything you left and you got to grieve your way, right or wrong. You got to grieve your way. Let him grieve his way. And if he needs to feel like he's doing something to help solve the mystery, which is what the whole last season was about the burn. Let him help. And I love how he sort of threw it in his face. I'm not Starfleet. You can't order me. I can go whenever I want. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a really good point. I was just thinking that they should have some sort of robotic device, robotic probe that they could send out there uh, with Zora to and be able to control and maneuver from far away either that or i've seen them also use other away vessels that are really small and compact um to to investigate further i was a little surprised that they wanted to use his fairly big ship because when it's in the whole bay it's it spans the entire width of the mm -hmm. whole bay but they got nothing else to carry yes but he he stood his ground. Um, he though I think he needed some more time to grieve, obviously. And um, once again, this is the reason why the ship needs a counselor um, to <laughs> to confide <Yeah>. in. <laughs> um, one quick thing before we leave this scene, I thought it was cool how Paul like beamed onto the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking, wow, so yeah, 
they don't have to travel up and down that like elevator anymore. <laughs> they could just beam from one location to another. And we saw that last episode, but they should do that more often, especially when I see Tilly running around. Just like, just no, they up. need to exercise. You <laughs> cannot just beam from your, like, do you know how many steps you would not get in a day? You, they say you need 10,000 steps a day. Paul, unless this is not an emergency, walk your butt from engineering up to the bridge because it's a slippery slope of no walking and they all need to walk because you're in space and you lose matter in your bones. You need to work out, people. But they were able to work it out so that Paul could act, could serve on the ship as a hologram? And here's the thing about that. If he could touch crap in the ship, why did Book need to physically be there? Because <laughs> that didn't make sense to me. Because I thought Paul could only just, like, you know, stand there. But if he can move everything and touch stuff and pick up stuff, and I put a, I pick up a pencil to mimic a flashlight, and have a little flashlight to, like, look at stuff or whatever, why the heck did not Book, why didn't you give Book one of those? Right. As well as Dittmer. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you could have a co-captain. <laughs> so like yeah. you give the Starfleet person a, a way to save his life, but none of, but not book. When they did the hollow thing, I just assumed it was, he was just going to stand there and collect the data, not be able to physically touch stuff. And so I was like, why didn't book just be a hollow as well? Yes, I got confused by that too when he started touching the programmable matter and it shifted with him, um, which I would just think that he would just reach right through it. So. Yeah, I'm like, okay. Like, Michael, you didn't want him to go? You did all this fighting thing that he shouldn't go, that someone else should go in his space? And I actually wonder, if it was Dittmar, and I'm not saying this because like his skin color, I'm just saying because he's not Starfleet. It makes me wonder, if Dittmar was going to go, were y'all going to make her go as a hollow? Because you, you let Paul right. go as a hollow. Right. So, and Paul did make a good point. He's like, "Look, you're gonna put the only two people who can who can control the spore drive onto the same ship. Like, it's like you know, shooting me on the airlock." <laughs> to your point earlier, <laughs> she's like, "Oh, wow!" <laughs> and first of all, you did not have to say "wow." You did shoot his ass into a, a, a <laughs> airlock without actually explaining to him that you had a plan that his family was safe, that book was gonna go back and get them. So let's not sit there and be like, oh, wow, that he threw it out on your face. I would have. I would have did it before him. <laughs> oh, hey, Michael, are you going to shoot me out of the airlock today? <laughs> you never know out with you. Right. Oh, now you want my help. <laughs> you talked to me. You could have curved before. <laughs> yes. And then also, I have a very, 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 very um, wondering question about engineering. Where's Jet? Because I feel like this is an engineering problem as well. Yes. Where yeah. is she? Like, not even that. We haven't heard a single thing about her. Yes, I've been wondering about her as well, especially because during this episode, there was um, some damage. And we all know that she's a survivor. She has grit. She'll, she'll take out duct tape in a heartbeat and improvise. And I was thinking with so many problems going on, it would been nice to have her there with Tilly and Indira troubleshooting some of these issues. Yes, with a dry humor. I love it. It's like she's dead inside like me. I love it. Oh, I overlooked one of the most important parts of this first half of the episode. Saru is back. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> and Saru is back, and he is still wearing his little pin showing that he's still like um, elder of the Council of Canamar. Do you think he returned to Discovery because it's like home as he knows everyone there or just because he wasn't interested in another big challenge to manage to be captain of a whole new environment and shit because i'm wondering why not take up this opportunity of a lifetime saru <laughs> like part of me gets that this guy like he you know book and book is hurting but at the same time Discovery doesn't need you. And not to say you're not needed because Saru is awesome. He's a part of their family. He's amazing. But I would still love to see them branch out a bit more in the future. I would like to see, so like 
going to lower decks for like a quick moment. There's like an episode where one of the characters leaves the sh- like leaves the ship, mm-hmm. and he still like we still see him in episodes on his ship mm-hmm. and going through his stuff until before he until he comes back. So like they had a little snip of Saru with everyone in Kanamar last episode. I think it would do him good to be the captain of another ship. And it sounds awful. Sounds awful. But like break up the Discovery crew. Yeah. Again. Like yes. break them up and half of them could have gone to the Sojourner. Yeah. And the other half could have stayed with Michael. And you can spread out their knowledge of the spore drive. Because again, they're the only people who know how to work the spore drive. But so you don't want yeah. them all on the same ship. Right, right. <laughs> and thank goodness Bryce spent some time away. And yeah. went to the Federation Academy. He returned with a little bit of astrophysics and also helped to troubleshoot and solve one of their dilemmas that they had today. Very important for them to branch out a yeah. bit. Like when they upgraded the ship. Oh, I like the old controls better. You're in the future. Adjust to it. <laughs> like, the new- and they have, because they're now using the programmable matter and there's a whole new uniforms. It's amazing how much they've learned in the last like four months. <laughs> I would have loved 900 years worth. Yes. I, maybe I'm weird. I, I would have loved to see that. Yeah, a whole training at like an academy in which they Yeah. Have. Yeah. Yeah. Like that would have been a fun episode of them going back and then being like the oh like even if it was literally just one episode of them addressing that they know nothing of the future <laughs> and like Tilly getting excited over something else she learned and Paul I'm like oh right. my god and then right. you learning more medical terms Jet learning whatever the heck Jet learns um, it just would have seen because granted yes Michael has been in the future a little bit lo- a year longer than them so it is understandable that like she would know she'd be a little bit more um, accustomed to the future everyone else like, I just, I would have loved to see, like, we got to see them on Earth for, like, a split second. I would have loved to see them adjust a little bit more to the future. Yeah. Break up for, like, an episode, and everyone has their own little, one of those episodes that just, like, you know, like, I call them a filler episodes, and I hate filler episodes, but I would have taken that as a filler episode. Yes, we never see really time in which they are on vacation. We never see that, um... Uh, like we saw with Spock, Spock em up, we never yeah. really saw a break for them to really socialize and see really activities outside of Federation stress, 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 stress. and that technology. I think that might be why I'm like sort of stressed about the show <laughs> because like we don't get enjoyment with them. We get action. And not to say action is not enjoyment, but we don't. Even the episode of them relaxing in a party all the way back in season one, it was Harry Mudd killing them over and over and over again. And so it's like, can we just get an episode where nothing in the episode really sort of matters, but all their relaxation happens between episodes. And I feel like on on, um, Strange New Worlds, we got to see them relax. We got to see them be more than just their station. Right. That's a really good point. And the word I'm looking for is shore leave. Yeah, yeah, we don't really see that that shore leave. Um, but speaking of areas of relaxation, I really like Michael's quarters. She does have nice. She does have that's nice I I loving the the African artifacts, the um the pillows and other artwork, the color scheme. She's got a swag area there. <laughs> I don't see a kitchen like Pikes. <laughs> She did not come here to cook. She came to rule, not to cook. Right. Right. <laughs> but she has a, her own hollow. Also very dangerous, but very believable as uh, Vulcan, not Navarre. Well, the way Saru walked in, I thought they were on a hollow deck, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And then like, oh no, you're just in her room. But how did you not hit any of her furniture? I but- was thinking that too. <laughs> Like, I'm I'm gonna reference lower lower deck again. Um, because I just love that show. But anyway, when they're on the hollow deck and like they're having fight scenes and they're like running down the hall in the hollow deck, I'm just like, but like, how did you fall forty feet? Like you're already standing on the floor. And so I was like, okay, this is animation. That's not real. But then like you come back to 
this and you're like okay dude you were walking and from what you see it's all flat land <laughs> but like she had a couch in there she had like a, a, a bookshelf in there she had a coffee table she had like knickknacks right. like you didn't hit the wall or nothing <laughs> and then I started thinking well how do you how do I really know that those are her quarters like that in itself could be a hologram it could be a hologram within a hologram <laughs> So it's just like it's programmable matter as her couch. <laughs> so I was just like, um, I just want to know: Are your knees messed up? Are your ankles busted? Because you keep hitting them. Are your toes okay? Then you hit them like, ah, oh, crap! There's a couch in the hollow deck. Like I just, I need to know how you didn't hit anything, or do you know her corners that well? But you don't because you just got there. So I was like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> maybe those used to be his quarters because he was the captain <laughs> but his furniture was arranged differently so moving on to a little bit more of a heavier note we go back to um we're gonna cut to book and paul being on the ship paul he was always awkward but seeing him this uncomfortable and awkward was hilarious he definitely doesn't know what to say to Book, even though he is sort of thankful to, not sort of, he is thankful to Book for saving his family from the Dilithium planet. But at the same time, he's like, I don't really know what to say to him. And Hugh makes a good point saying like, well, what did you want people to say to me after you lost me? And Paul's like, you know, it's not the same, but it's very true because the only people who know what to say during grief are people who've been through something similar. And I know from experience, most people want to be left alone. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, so we've lost the complete culture, yes. the environment, everything. And he just left. So he yes. was just reconnecting with his kin there. Paul, yes, you should know what he feels like because you have gone through the loss of, like, you've watched someone die in front of you. You've held your dead husband in your arms before. Um Michael, you've lost your father. I won't say your mother, but you lost your father. And you understand what that loss is. You understand, like most people really want to sort of be alone in their feelings to feel it, to get through it. And like, just give him time. What do you need? To be left alone. He's like, please leave. When grief, I feel like people always say things to make themselves feel better and not thinking like, oh, I'm helping the person. You're not. The only thing I could think of this entire episode when Paul kept talking the book was shut up. I know you're trying to be a good person, but sometimes saying nothing is all the person needs. I'm here yeah. for you. Yes. Yeah. You want to talk? Yes. I'm here. Yes. Let him be. Let let him grieve. It hasn't even been like what a week. Let right. him grieve. It's still right. fresh because like you're going through the little little the 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 at, outer atmosphere. It's like there's a lot of debris. Well, it doesn't just go through a planetary system. Oh, I'm so sorry. Dude, that was his planet. <laughs> like, you're flying through his planet, Paul. How can you be so stupid? <laughs> but at least he admitted that he felt awkward, but he wanted to connect better with Book. It's just that that really wasn't the time, and he should have reached out earlier. <laughs> yeah. They do have a moment of connection, though. Because yes. Paul is refusing to leave Book alone when it seems like everything, when their back's against the wall... And the anomaly is about to destroy everyone. The anomaly is attacking Discovery. And Paul, a uh, book is telling Paul to take the little transmitter off his head. And Paul also lets him know, like, hey, none of the none of the data. But I'm book was hallucinating, out. though. I think it's really important to say that book was seeing the little kid on the ship and mm -hmm. he wasn't there. And so book was not was okay. not fully in control there. And not. there was a few times in which Paul helped bring him out yeah. of that state to focus on their mission, the drive, and yes. And it seemed like Book was potentially there for, as a suicide mission, like there just to get the data, even if he didn't survive, because he was... Um, he wanted to be with everyone he lost. How many times have we seen that on a television show? I want to be with them, so I don't... I feel like uh, Captain Pike was doing that, even though he knew he wasn't going to die. He just kept doing all the suicide missions. Like, dude, if you don't stop tempting fate. <laughs> I've seen Michael do it with, uh, in a couple episodes where 
I mean, Greta has never been to that full extent, I don't think, but where she's done stupid things that could have risked her life, that could have ended her life. So I have come to say that I think Book and Michael make the perfect couple because they're both stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Did you catch? Did you catch the ending that I said? Yes, no, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. But like, oh, you guys both make stupid, ra- ra- irrational decisions. You're perfect for each other. Um, again, this is why Book should have also had the transmitter because the moment he started hallucinating, it should have zapped his ass back and then put Dittmer in the seat with another little hollow thingy. <laughs> but he was able to. Michael, I, I guess, comfort him and was able to help him help him glide out with this kite flying technique to use like the ways from the anomaly to like sail out of the black hole. <laughs> I don't <laughs> fuzzy logic there, but it worked. I just called it surf just call it surfing, people. Why did they call it kites? Just call it surfing. What he was doing was riding a wave. You know what rides surfing? Yes. He was surfing the really wave cool. out, people. Why did star? Come on. I know you're in space, but like, y'all don't know the term surfing? Are y'all that far removed from anything that happens on Earth? <laughs> 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 so once again, Bryce helped to come out with that solution, and uh, Tilly and Indira... Um, we're troubleshooting in the background um, in the room next door to figure out like what what was going on with the anomaly. I was a little sketchy there because like they were trying to figure out the sequence. Then at one point in time, Tilly ran off and said, "I have good news and bad news." And at the bad, the good news we we know when the anomaly is going to hit, and bad news is going to be in a few seconds. And I was thinking, just get to the point. <laughs> you wasted a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but that's time yeah. Tilly and you made a little po- point in the notes of something that I caught as well I feel like there's a little bit of a tension between Tilly and Indira and part of it and I have to agree with your note that Indira is filling Tilly's novice role mm-hmm. and like the adorable new engineer but at the same time she's technically may know more than Tilly like while she may not know everything about Discovery she's more suited to all the new technology. And so while Discovery, because Tilly made a point to say, yes, and we always run the, we run everything like three or four times, you may not, and Vera may not need to do that because she may have a better way that her algorithm does all of that automatically. So you don't have to recheck and check and recheck. And I felt like there's a little bit of tension. So Tilly's worried and she seems a little more incensed, like, um, I don't know, uh, short-tempered? Yes. Like and in a way that I haven't seen her before. Yeah. And I don't like it. Don't don't mess with my girl Tilly. Okay. Yeah. I'm holding up a pen as a threat right now, but you can't see it because of the green screen. Don't mess with my girl Tilly. So Sorry, maybe she's question. stressed and she needs someone to talk to or homesick. But yeah, I don't I'm I'm a little worried about how this character is developing. Me too. So we see that they are able to review the data and bad news. The black hole changed direction when Discovery got there. And that that's why Discovery got attacked. And so now another more another piece of data that they thought they that they didn't have, but now they have that changes everything about Discovery. Because now this black hole can move directions, meaning it can attack anyone anywhere. The horror of almost dying you can wipe out anyone. Almost like the AI one to do in season two. But we're not gonna talk about that. So to end this episode on a happy note someone's getting a body which is really weird but someone's getting a body drum roll please gray gray is transitioning yes how do you feel i want to see more gray so Mm -hmm. i'm interested i'm concerned about how they're gonna do this so it still seems so it's logical (laughs) I, i need it to make sense and I'm a little worried about this. I mean, when we've we've seen um, Arium, so we've seen robots before. I'm wondering how this state, how they're going to make this happen for us so that it's believable. And I'm also worried about how Indira will feel after losing 
her one-on-one ability with Gray. Right. Yeah, one-on-one because ability with Gray. then sh then they will have to share Gray again with the rest of the community when oh, this pink part. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. I think that it is a um issue that's gonna be addressed in later episodes because not that Endera doesn't want Gray back, because I definitely know they want and they want Gray back to be able to hold them and kiss them or whatever teenagers do, you know? And Dara is always I can definitely see there being an episode of someone asking Gray something and Endera repeating it because like yeah. they're used to being the one always having to do it. Now, to your part about it making sense of how they're going to bring Gray back, I think the only way it can make sense is if they take the thing out of Indira and put it in Gray, because it has all of Gray's memories. I think that's the, the host, the thing that she's hosting right. inside, inside of them. Right. I think because uh, Gray makes the point that he wants to learn how to be a guardian again. The only way Indira can see Gray is because of the host. Like, it's not a hallucination. And so the only way to get it out of Indira, I think, is the host. But then will they lose all the other Tau hosts as well? Yes. yes. Because, all of them. Wow. Indira was never supposed to be the... Right. And so Gray is supposed to have all of the knowledge. Because Indira can't see anyone else but Gray. So my understanding is Gray is the lead personality. So... If the host is put into the new body, Gray takes over the body with everyone's memories, like it was supposed to be before he died. Wow. So then Adira would no longer be the host. All of, of that knowledge that she doesn't remember. Right. And I think have an empty void. Like, yeah. because learning how to play the cello and all, all these other experiences, she. They just became accustomed to all of that. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> that that's I, a I hard think, reset. <laughs> I think that's the only way it could work. Because there's no way to really like gain, to take Gray's consciousness out of Endera. At the end of the day, Endera is not true. It's weird. But I'm excited to see little Gray come back. And then everyone can live forever. Which, No. So, because you have to have their consciousness. And then, but if it was, because I thought the same thing. I really did. Because it made me think of Back to Strange New Worlds, the daughter who was living in the transporter thing. And so it's like, could everyone just say, upload their latest? So I don't know. Because so I'm thinking the only way I could really do it is with, I, I don't know. Okay. We'll, we'll stay tuned. Because you're right. Everyone could live forever. And they said that they tried it out before with Picard, and that was successful. So <laughs> maybe it's just something that's known, but it's not done because people need to die. They'll have to take that back to the the Trill ho homeland. See how they adjust to that. Oh, see, there's so many questions, people. There's so many questions, and we need answers. <laughs> so any last thoughts before we log off today? I'm intrigued by this. 13 episode season journey <laughs> so i'm sure it's gonna take 13 more hours to figure out how this all unfolds i'm looking forward to it and um finding jet and finding out a lot more about these characters i i'm excited to see saru again back on discovery and um i missed him so what about you i'm ready to know what the issue is I would like for this to be fixed in the next episode because I just don't want to be let down like I was at the end of season three. So, so it's not just one, but a double too. <laughs> so that makes me wonder, are they just going to explain it away or is it going to have an actual, oh my God, this whole Miss made this whole 13 seasons, sorry, 13 episodes worth it. At this moment, I don't know if I have hope that they can pull it off. Hopefully, as we get closer, I may change my mind. I reserve the right to change my mind and be like, I was wrong. They did blow my socks off. So whether you're on Team Manika 
<laughs> interested in the 13th episode or team andrea who want to wrap this up the next episode <laughs> please stay tuned <laughs> as always i'm andrea and i'm monica team oh andrea God. live long and prosper <laughs> <laughs>